Okay, this is the notes for section 11.8, Modeling Data with Polynomials. If you haven't done so already, make sure you read the section before continuing on with these notes. Um, so w we've done this before uh, on several different equations. We did it We did it with linear equations. We did it with quadratics. We did it with exponential. Um, now what we want to do is we want to model data with a polynomial. Uh, and when we do it, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually f come up with an exact model for the data. Uh, but the method that we're going to use, is the, or the five steps that I'm going to use, I have illustrated right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through example one, and as I go through it, I'll be kind of highlighting these five steps as, as, we, as we do the whole problem. So... Um, Anytime you do a problem like this, you want to kind of follow this five-step approach to actually um, coming up with a solution to modeling uh, modeling the data with with a polynomial. And remember, when you're doing that, when when you're done, you should have a polynomial, a specific polynomial, um, with coefficients for for the for the variables, such that um, it models the data that you have. So you might want to read example one on page 778 and 779 before continuing it. it relates very closely to the example I'm going to do here. It says square tiles are used to construct a square patio as shown below. Find the polynomial function that relates the total number of tiles, that's key, the total number of tiles uh, to the number of rings R. Let the center tile be ring number one. Okay, so what we're going to do is for each ring we want to find the number of tiles. So, so sometimes you're going to be given a set of data here. We have to kind of generate that set of data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and get the number of tiles, total tiles that is, for each ring. So if I look at the first ring, which is this right here, number one, okay, there's going to be just the one tile there. If I look at ring number two, well there's a total of three, six, seven, eight, or eight in the ring two, plus you gotta count the one from the ring before. So that means that there's gonna be a total of nine after we're done with that second ring. So it's, remember it's total tiles. So if I go to the next one now, if I add up all the ones that are in the third ring, Okay. And I'm going to add the 9 onto it as well. So we have a total of, um, let's see, 16 plus 9, which gives me 25 tiles after the third ring. Remember, it's total tiles again. And then after the fourth ring, if I add all of those up, um, let's see if we count those up, get 24 plus the 25 that I already had, so I'd have a total of 49 tiles. And if I were to add a fifth ring onto this, okay, um, and, and added those up, um, I would have a total of 32 more tiles, which would give me 81 here. So I know the fifth ring isn't showing, but it gives me just a little bit more data to work with. So I've generated my, my set of data which a lot of times we won't have to do, but in this case we did. Now what I want to do is I want to look at the first set of differences. So I'm going to just label that as first, and I'm going to, I'm going to look at the differences between my t values. So between 9 and 1 is 8, between 25 and 9 is 16, between 49 and 25 we have 24, and here this would be, um, I'm sorry, that would be 32. Notice how the, the numbers that are in those first set of differences really are what we found um, in terms of the new tiles that were added. Okay, Now I'm going to look at my second set of differences here. And as I look at those second set of differences, between 8 and 16 it's 8, between 24 and 16 it's 8, and between 32 and 24 it's 8. So all of the second set of differences are equal. So what that tells us is that we know that a polynomial to model this, this situation would have to be of degree 2. 
So a, a basically a quadratic model will work for this situation. So we'll call that polynomial P of R. And in general, then, that would be AX squared plus BX plus C. Now, there's in order for me to get a specific equation that I'm looking for, I need to figure out what A, B, and C are. So there's three unknowns. Therefore, in order for me to find uh, a specific equation, I have to find three equations in terms of A, B, and C. So let's review kind of from up here what we've done. We've done step number one here, and we've done step number two. We're on step three. So it says use the data points and the general equation to write equations in terms of the coefficients of the general equation. The number of equations needed is equal to the degree determined in step one. So we determined it was degree two, so I need a total of uh, three equations for a degree two, because there's an A, B, and C there. So I'm going to use these ordered pairs, one, one. 2, 9, and 3, 25. And I'm going to plug them in to get my three, three equations. So it would be 1 is equal to A plus B plus C. I can say, if I plug um, 2, 9 in, I can say 9 is equal to, well, i got to go 2 squared, which is 4A plus uh, 2 times B plus C. That's a 9 there. And then when I put 3 in, I have 25 is equal to 9A plus 3B plus C. So I have a system now with three equations and three unknowns. So I've, I've now I've taken and I've done step 3. The next thing we need to do is solve that system. Okay? So to solve that system, I can use any method that I want. I think, generally speaking, that the method of using um, matrices is probably going to work best in this situation. So I'm going to set up my matrices. I can say 1, 1, 1, 4, 2, 1, and 9, 3, 1 would be my coefficient matrix times ABC is equal to my answer matrix of 1, 9, and 25. Okay. And now we can solve that. So ABC would be equal to, um, if we call this A and this B, then it would be A inverse times B. OK, so if I enter uh, those matrices into my calculator here, remember to get the matrices, just use this button right here. Okay, And um, if I multiply that, you'll notice that I get 4, negative 4, and 1. Remember, that would be my A, B, and C. So 4, negative 4, and 1 would be A, B, and C. Therefore, uh, P of R, if I'm looking at it specifically, would be, I'm going to plug 4 in for A, so it would be 4x squared minus 4x, plugging that in for B, and plugging 1 in for C, that would be plus 1. So this right here would be a specific polynomial to show or to, to model that data. <laughs>so we can use this exact same method even if our polynomial is greater than two and let's take a look at example two this is, this is one where we'll, we'll notice that the polynomial is a polynomial that has a degree greater than two it says a sculpture is to be placed on a concrete structure formed by square prisms as shown each prism is a half foot high the top of the prism is uh, square two feet on a side and the next larger prism is four feet on the side, the third is six feet on the side, and so on. Find the total volume V of concrete needed for N prisms. So once again, this is one of those ones where we have to generate the, the data first and then find the set of differences. So let's do that. 
So I have a chart here in which I have N, the, which, which represents the number of prisms, and V, which represents the volume of each of those prisms. And what I want to do is I want to look at that and, and, and um, think about how we're coming up with that volume. So the volume, to get the volume, remember, what we're doing is we're saying um, volume is length times width times height. So if there's only one um, if there's only one prism, I'm going to take 2 times 2 times 1 half, or 4 times 1 half, which would be equal to 2. And then to get the next one, since I'm looking for the total amount of concrete, uh, when I'm looking at two prisms, I'm going to take the, the 2 that I already have, and I'm going to add on 8, because the next one would be 4 times 4 times 1 half, or 16 times 1 half, which is 8. So I'm going to add 8 on. So to go to the, the next one, I would be adding 36 times 1 half, or 18. The next one after that would be 64 times 1 half, which is 32. Then 100 times 1 half, uh, 144 times 1 half. So that's how we're generating this. So you'll notice what, what each layer adds on is really our first set of differences. Okay, Our second set of differences then is here. And you'll notice that we are equal at that third set of differences. So that's that that tells me that the degree of the polynomial that I'd be looking for would be of degree three. So that means that in general we can write a polynomial for that, and I can say uh, p of n in this case could be written as a n cubed plus b n squared plus c n plus d. So since there's four unknowns in my equation, I have to come up with four equations to represent those four unknowns. So now I have to write a system involving four equations with four unknowns. So I'm going to use uh, some ordered pairs here. And it's, it's just easiest to use the first four sets of ordered pairs. So I want to use those to write um, four equations with four unknowns. So I'm going to plug 1 in for n and 2 in for the value of the function. So let's, let's do that real quickly here. So if I plug those four ordered pairs in, this is the system I would come up with. You'll notice that the coefficient on a is always going to be, so this is 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed. Coefficient on b is 1 cubed, 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed, or excuse me, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. Here it's 1, 2, 3, 4. And then d is always just the, the constant of, of 1. So this is, this is the system that I'd want to solve, and I can use matrices to do that, just like I did before. So the matrix, that I, matrix that I would have for the coefficients would be 1, 1, 1, 1, 8, 4, 2, 1, 27, 9, 3, and 1, and finally 64, 16, 4, and 1. That would be the coefficient matrix. And then remember, we're multiplying that by A, B, C, D to get the answer matrix, which is 2, 10, 28, and 60. Okay. Now I'm going to use my calculator to solve this. So if this is A and this is B, I'm going to take A inverse times B to get the matrix that I'm looking for. Okay, so if I solve that on my calculator, this is what I'd have, 2 thirds, 1, 1 third, 0. Please check that on your calculator, make sure that you're getting the same thing. And then I'm going to use those as my A, B, C, and D in my general equation. Therefore, P of R, or P of N, excuse me, in this case, would be equal to 2 thirds N cubed plus n squared, 1n squared, which is just n squared, plus 1 third n, and then be plus 0, which I don't have to write on. So this would be 
the polynomial that I would be looking for. Finally, I just want to mention that uh, to make sure you read 7, 781 on the top of 782 uh, in, involving modeling a finite set of points. But basically, in general, if, if we have a finite set of points, and we'll call them n points uh, of a function, there exists a polynomial formula of some degree less than n such that it would be be able to be modeling those n points exactly. Okay, so just make sure that you've read through that and if you have any questions about that we can talk about that in class.